Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Togoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss another spinal reflex arc, and this is called the withdrawal reflex. Okay, so the withdrawal reflex is also a phasic reflex, like the uh, patellar or stretch reflex, and that just means that this reflex is only going to be present as long as the stimulus is present. Okay, um, Once you remove the stimulus, then the reflex will stop. Okay, If the reflex continued after the stimulus was removed, then you'd have what's called a tonic reflex, and that's going to be indicative of upper motor neuron damage, or just some kind of damage to the central nervous system. Okay. But this is the withdrawal reflex. Before we get into the details of the withdrawal reflex, I want to take a look at this scene in a movie, and we're going to point out some things that are wrong with it, and then after we go through the mechanism of the withdrawal reflex, you'll hopefully understand why. So this is one of the most iconic scenes in all of the Indiana Jones movies. This is specifically from Raiders of the Lost Ark. So in this scene, this guy it picks up a really, really, really scalding hot medallion. Okay, and he just holds on to it for a few seconds before realizing that it's hot and screaming and then dropping it and then he puts his hand in the snow to cool the thing off, right? Now there is no reason to believe that this guy has any pre-existing neurological damage. He's crazy but has no neurological damage. And so the response that this guy has to picking up that scalding hot medallion is completely physiologically abnormal. Okay. What really should have happened is he should have laid probably one finger on it and then immediately initiated the withdrawal reflex. And when I say he initiated it, I mean his body did. This is, of course, involuntary. So let's now go over the withdrawal reflex, and then we'll come back to that video and predict what really should have happened um, as soon as he touched that. We'll get pretty specific there. So the withdrawal reflex is something that happens when your body or a part of your body touches or comes in contact with a noxious stimulus. Um, this could be something like stepping on a thumbtack. Um, it could be, in this case, the person's finger is going over this flame. Maybe the finger gets a little bit too close to the flame. Or it could be something where you're just going around your kitchen and you don't realize that a pan is really hot. You go to touch it and what happens? immediately your body withdraws from whatever that object is. If it's fire, your body withdraws from that. If you step on a tack, your foot and leg withdraw from that. So if you had to sum up the withdrawal reflex in really one sentence, it's just generally get whatever body part it is away from the noxious stimulus. Okay, get it away. And so depending on what part of the body it is, we're gonna have different muscles contract. But here, we're just going to look at it very generally, but note that this applies for any muscle that's required in order to remove that part of the body from the stimulus. So, of course, the stimulus here is fire, okay? And suppose this person gets the finger a little too close to that flame, well, they're going to be withdrawing their arm and their entire hand from that flame. And so you have receptors in your finger that are going to sense that noxious stimulus. If we actually zoom in here and look at the receptor, you can actually see that it's a free nerve ending. Um, and uh, a great example of those are nociceptors, which are pain-sensitive receptors. Now, that receptor through this neuron is going to relay that information up to the spinal cord. Now, a few things here. Um, here's the cell body of this sensory neuron. Okay. Um, technically, it's located in the dorsal root ganglion. That's not shown here. But the whole point is that that information through this afferent or sensory neuron is relayed into the spinal cord. Now, if this pain was pretty minor down here, then most likely what would happen is the sensory neuron would lead into the spinal cord, and then it would just ascend up the spinal cord to the brain for processing. But this is a highly noxious stimulus, and you don't want your finger there for very long. So instead of wasting time going all the way up to the brain for integration, this neuron's going to synapse here with this interneuron, and this interneuron is excitatory. Okay? This interneuron is excitatory. And then that interneuron will in turn synapse with an efferent or motor neuron that goes to the particular muscle that you need to contract. Okay, so again, sensory neuron, interneuron, and then the efferent or motor neuron. And so ultimately what happens is the sensory neuron activates the interneuron, and then the interneuron activates the efferent or motor neuron. Now this particular motor neuron 
is leading to what looks like the biceps brachii muscle, or just in general, the elbow flexors. And let's think about why that makes sense. Because we want to remove our finger from the stimulus, right? Well, the biceps brachii might just be one muscle that needs to contract out of many to remove that finger. What's going to happen if you, con if you contract the elbow flexors? Well, when your elbow flexors contract, your forearm right here is going to go from being horizontal to being more like this, right? Because that's an elbow flexion. So now the forearm is going to be like this. And then your hand's going to be up here. So your hand would be away from the flame. There might be some other muscles here that need to contract. Think about it. If we perform a shoulder abduction or even a flexion, both those things would elevate the arm across the glenohumeral joint. So maybe the deltoids might actually get some contraction. Maybe even the scapular elevators would get some contraction. Maybe even the anterior deltoid. Things that would ultimately get your hand away from the stimulus. Also, we might get some, if your hand's in this position, some wrist flexion. Okay, we might get some finger extension, okay? So the idea here is it's not just one muscle, even though it typically shows that, it's usually a series of muscles that all have the goal of removing that finger or whatever the body part is away from the stimulus. We can also think about the withdrawal reflex from stepping on a tack, right? So go ahead and stand up. This will actually help you learn this. Uh, imagine stepping on a tack with your right foot. What happens? Well, first of all, your hip flexes. So do a hip flexion of your right hip while remaining planted on the left foot. And when you perform that right hip flexion, what happens? Your foot comes off the ground, right? As soon as you do a hip flexion, your foot's coming off the ground. But also notice what's happening when you do that motion, okay? At least the typical motion if you were to step on a tack. Your knee is also flexing, right? Your hip flexes, your knee flexes. And also, your ankle would probably dorsiflex because that would help remove your foot from the noxious stimulus on the plantar surface of the foot. Okay? So the whole idea here is that you have a noxious stimulus that's detected through a receptor. The sensory neuron from that receptor relays the information into the central nervous system. And that afferent or sensory neuron synapses with an interneuron, and it activates that interneuron. And then in turn, that interneuron activates the efferent or motor neuron, leading to the contraction of muscles that would be specific for removing that part of the body and getting it as far away from that stimulus as possible. The other thing to reiterate with the withdrawal reflex is, again, if you have a really severe, acute, noxious stimulus like this, you don't want to waste time having to relay that information up the spinal cord to the brain. So that's why this occurs in a reflex manner, where this afferent neuron synapses with the interneuron. Again, back to this original video right here. Okay, um, If we think about what's wrong with this, first of all, um, if the moment he put his finger on that hot medallion, he would have withdrawn. Okay, The fact that he actually puts his hand completely around it and then still manages to hold on to it for a few seconds is completely abnormal. What this guy should have had was some finger extension. Extension of the fingers would bring those fingers away from the medallion as quickly as possible. Some elbow flexion and then probably some shoulder flexion, maybe some abduction in there as well. All of those things would remove his hand as, and get it as far away from that noxious stimulus as possible and as quickly as possible. So hopefully this video has given you a good understanding of the withdrawal reflex. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In the following video, we're going to look at the withdrawal reflex. Thank you.